Hello and welcome to Behind the Science, where we ask challenging questions directly to the scientists who are trying to solve today's toughest problems. I'm your host, Jennifer Fournier. I'm a mom of young children, and no matter the time of day, one of them is always more difficult to deal with than the others. Sometimes it is amazing that I even get out of the house in one piece. And whether you have kids or not, you may have run into these problematic circumstances at home or work and have had to come up with coping strategies to deal with the tough ones. So in this episode of Behind the Science, we are going to have a therapy session and discuss our laboratory problem children. Some are your stories, some are ours, and we will look to provide tips and tricks to help you cope if you ever find yourself in these problematic situations. Hello, Jennifer Fournier, Certified Technology Therapist. How can I help you? Oh my, okay, take a deep breath. Uh, let's go back to the basics and walk through the care and use. Great. Did you remember to do um, the buffer exchange? All right, well, I have to go to my next appointment. Um, I'm gonna send you a part number to help. Uh, use that reagent, try to relax. Uh, we will get this to work, so follow the tips and tricks, and I will follow up with you later today. All right, sounds good. I'll talk to you later. All right, bye-bye. Hello, everybody. Oh, wow, full house today. All right, let me see who is first on my appointment list. All right, I have Priya. You are up first, so come on. Go to the office. How are you today? Ah, could be better. Oh gosh. All right. Let's work this out. So Priya, what brings you in today? Oh, Jen, I'm just, you know, I'm just so I've been so stressed off late. It's oh, just it's just crazy. Cause, you know, and, and thank you for making time for me. It's I've you know, ever since I got back from this business trip. Um, and I've had to deal with some of these questions uh, from from some of the users of our Apiflora mass label. What types of questions? Well, you know, uh, um, they're asking me if you know Apiflora mass could be used for molecules other than monoclonal antibodies. Good questions. You know, specifically EPO. Oh. You know, EPO is coming off of patent, so yes. you know a lot of questions around that. Well, and you know, it's just driving me crazy. I just want to help and uh, I help answer these questions, and I I just I just don't know how. Well, I have some good news for you. We have a recent application note that just got released. It is hot off the press. And guess what the sample is? It's EPO. EPO? It's EPO. So here is some information on how to download that application note. So in this work, in the application note I prescribed, we have been successful in identifying EPO and glycans by employing a one-dimensional hillock separation along with online electrospray ionization, QTOF MS detection. This is an approach that is facilitated by the improved fluorescence and MS sensitivity afforded by Rapiflora mass labeling. Hi, Bill. What brings you in today? Hi, Jen. I've got some serious problems with my glycans. Well, that's not good to hear. Uh, Tell no. me a little bit more about these problems. Oh, I'm working on a comparability study of Biosimilar and Innovator, and I need to make sure that the glycan profiles on each protein are the same. All right, so what are you doing about this comparability? <sighs> well, right now I'm, I'm using some mass spectrometry, mm -hmm. and I can see some major structures, but I really need to see some lower abundant structures. Oh. I keep reading about these things in the literature and I can't see them. I don't know what to do. So that's your issue. That's a huge issue. All right, well calm down, take a deep breath, and we are going to figure this out. Oh, thanks, Jen. All right. In the case of comparability testing between an innovator and biosimilar, here's an example using Remicade. These samples were analyzed, paying particular attention to the possible immunogenic glycans as highlighted, for example, the alpha-link galactose-galactose pairs. In general, we have found that the major glycan structures on both maps are very similar, and there appears to be some slight differences in lower abundant glycans that we can now see with the added sensitivity of the Rapiflora mass label. Joe, how are you? What brings you in today? I got some serious problems. What kind of problems? Critical pairs. Well, you gotta tell me a little bit more than that. 
Well, you know, I've had a, a lot of success with the Rappi Floor MS kit. It saved a boatload of time. Great. But I have these critical pairs that I'm not able to separate in a chromatographic run. Well, that chromatographic separation can uh, sometimes be a little bit tricky. Yeah, these are high mano species. All right, and so you've got to get them separated. Yeah. All right, well, I may have a solution for you. So we've been looking at this internally. Um, there are some considerations that you need to take when you're doing some chromatographic separation. So let me give you some tips and tricks on that. We'll work through some of the experimental design, and I think I can get you started to get better separation of those critical pairs. Great. Sound Thanks. okay? So to help Joe with some of his problems in regards to resolving critical pairs, we refer to this application note where we highlight the development of an LC method that optimizes the chromatographic resolution for the released N-glycans that are commonly found on MABs, including those high mannos N-glycan structures that are known to negatively affect circulating half-life as well as indicate apparent cell culture conditions. So in this application note, we highlight the development of an LCMS method that optimizes this chromatographic resolution. And by improving the resolution of these critical pairs of N-glycans, we have provided additional separation space for monitoring those high mano structures. Ken, what is the matter? We're sick. We? Well, me and, and my computer, it's making this awful grinding noise. Okay, well, here's a tissue for your sickness, but didn't you see the sign on the outside of the door? We're only seeing uh, glycan patients today. You're not going to help me? I can't help you today, but maybe go see a doctor for your sickness, and downstairs, MIS can help you with your computer. <laughs> tough issues. I think we have learned best not to ignore those issues, but tackle them head on and really think about the source and use the tools available to get to the right answer. Some require small tweaks and others require an overall revamp. You know what would be really useful? A support community, just like my therapy office, where you can have immediate access to the most recent literature we publish and ask questions. Believe it or not, that does exist. So check out the links below for application notes that help solve the problems we solve today as well as information about the LinkedIn support group. We are going to slightly change gears in this next Behind the Science episode and focus on how to get effective protein digest, whether they're glycoproteins or not. In order to analyze these proteins, you always need to do one thing, lose that quaternary structure. So get ready to be relaxed. See you next time.